Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. I'm so glad to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So in today's video, I am so excited. We're gonna be talking about everything I read in May. So I read, I think six books in May and they were all very kind of different from my normal reading style. A lot of my reads were influenced by the free little libraries that I went to. And I also picked up a book from my friends buildings library none of these books actually one of them was on my tbr for this month but the other five were not and i have one five star read i have one one star read on here so i am so excited to tell you guys about every single book that i read and give you my review so i read a few books on my kindle which i actually got this month um ever since i got back into reading a couple months ago i really just wanted a kindle to read on because i was reading on an ipad mini 2 and that shit was so slow so I got a Kindle to read books that I do not have physical copies of. So I read two physical books and I think four books on my Kindle this month. The first book that I read in May at the very beginning of the month is called If You Tell by Greg Olson. I read this one on my Kindle. And what I actually really like about the Kindle is that the book that you're reading can actually be the screensaver. So that's really cool. It is a true story of murder, family secrets, and the unbreakable bond of sisterhood. So at the beginning of the month, I really wanted to read kind of an autobiography or a true story. How I found this was I was actually looking up like inspirational stories of famous people or um, just true stories that you really need to read that are recommended and this one came up on the list this is not an inspirational um story at all it's actually a very dark and kind of like a true crime which i didn't expect at all going into this but i give this one four out of five stars this book is about three sisters named nikki sammy and tori who grow up in a household with a very abusive mom and she's abusive to the level of unthinkable unspeakable unimaginable things she tortured her kids she involved them in murder she manipulated them if you think about the worst mother in the world this is her times a thousand she was not a good person these three sisters grow up in a household where abuse is very prominent and their father or their stepfather is an accomplice to all of this he basically helps his wife to punish and abuse the kids and they're all just very very messed up and it's basically just tells the story of the three sisters learning to survive and getting out of that house alive and telling their story to this author it's a very very sad very tragic story it's just unimaginable like i don't know what i would do if i was in this situation if i was one of the sisters yeah so i did not expect this to be a true crime book but it's kind of a biography true crime because there were multiple murders involved the writing and the storytelling was really good though i wish there were kind of multiple perspectives um, and I wish that it was told more in order. Every part of this book was about one prominent person that had a major role in Shelly's abuse. So Shelly would be abusing and using this person who came to live with them at the house. Because each part was about a different prominent person, it wasn't told in the most chronological order so you kind of jump back and forth between when the kids were really young and then when the kids were a lot older i mean the author for this probably interviewed the three girls and the husband quite a lot and it was kind of hard for him to piece together everything that happened i think he did his best but i think it could have been told just a little bit better and yeah i also thought that it got a little bit boring and kind of repetitive in the middle section because it was basically just repeating all of the things that Shelly did, all of the torture and the abuse that went on. And you could kind of get the gist of it. Like, yes, you do need to include it in the story because it just shows you how messed up of a person she was. But I just think it was a little bit repetitive. There were also a lot of unanswered questions at the end. I had a couple like, how did the neighbors not know what was going on in the household and with the kids? I feel like we just needed a little bit more perspective on the story and that it could have been written a little bit better. But overall, I really liked it and it was a really good true crime book. So the second book that I read this month is called My Sister the Serial Killer by O. Yinken Brith White. 
I don't think I said her name right. I think she's Nigerian, so I apologize in advance. I gave this one five out of five stars. I really, really, really enjoyed it. So I picked this book up at my friend's building's library. You know how in some condo buildings, they have free libraries where people can just drop books off or take books? So I saw this one there and this book was actually on my TBR. I think I heard Jack Edwards talking about this book, if not some other booktuber. Jack Edwards is my absolute favorite booktuber. He's the king of booktube. If you don't know him, I will link his channel in the description. He gives great book recommendations. Reading the back of this just sounded so intriguing. So yeah, it was my five star read of this month. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what it's about. So this book is about this woman named Kareed who has a sister named Ayula. So Ayula is the favorite child and she's adored by many people. And Ayula basically gets into these relationships with men and she ends up killing them. So at the very first chapter of this book, Kareed gets a phone call from her sister Ayula saying that she killed her date and this is the third time that she has killed a boy and Ayula basically goes and has to help clean up after the murder and deal with the consequences that come afterwards and at the same time Kareed works at a hospital where she's about to become head nurse and she is actually in love with the head doctor who she's never told and he doesn't seem to like her back in the same way as she does. So this story basically just follows the two sisters as they go on, um, how they're covering up the murders and this doctor that Kareed likes kind of gets involved with it and you basically just see what happens after that. So what I like about this book is that there are very short chapters. As you can see, this chapter is only like two pages. This chapter is four pages only. And what's really cool about this is that at the beginning of every chapter, there's no chapter numbers. It just tells you one word that has significance in chapter. So it's kind of foreshadowing what the chapter is gonna be about. So for example, this one says father. It was also really interesting to see the cultural differences. So they live in Lagos, Nigeria, I believe. And even though it isn't the most prominent thing in the book, there are cultural differences. Um, for example, Kareed got stopped on the highway by one of the highway police or whatever you would call them and she basically had to act more stupid than she was to get out of a ticket that she didn't even deserve. They were just kind of picking on her for it and you get to kind of see how they live and what food they eat and just like little cultural things that i thought that this was really cool i really love the connection between the two sisters even though ayula is very messed up and she kills her dates i like that kareed is always there to jump in for her and help her it just shows that the two sisters will always be there for each other no matter what even if it's cleaning up after a murder. So I read this book in the span of probably two to three days. It was really fast paced, the chapters were short and the story moved along quite fast, which I really, really like in a book. So I love that last book so much that I wanted to see what else the author wrote. And I actually found out that she wrote, I think two or three short stories that are also based in Lagos, Nigeria. So the first one is called Treasure and I gave this one three out of five stars. So this short story is about a wannabe Instagram influencer named Treasure. I think she has like 5K Instagram followers or something like that. She's always posting pictures of herself, um, always wearing these like nice fancy outfits and she lives in a kind of high-end gated community. She's very self-centered and only cares about getting more followers which i really i didn't like that like the main character is not very likable on the other side of the story there is this guy who follows her on instagram he becomes obsessed with her and he's a little bit more lower class than her and one day treasure posts a picture and she accidentally tags her location in it so the guy who's obsessed with her catches it and he goes and tries to meet her you kind of just see the story going south from there so i'm gonna leave it at that if i say anything else i think i'm gonna be giving out spoilers i didn't like the story as much as my sister the serial killer maybe there wasn't enough time to build up the story i think it was maybe only 100 pages 150 or maybe even a little bit less but it just goes to show you need to be careful about what you post or if you post 
too much personal stuff about your life, then things can go south fast if you have stalkers like this. It was really fast paced as well, just like her other book. And the main character isn't likable. I don't think she's meant to be likable, but she was really self-centered throughout the whole book. And even in the end, she didn't learn her lesson. So if you know me, you know that I love a good character development, character progression during the story. And I didn't get that through this book. So it was a little bit disappointing to me. I, I had hoped that the ending would have been better than it was, but it really wasn't. So that's why I gave it three stars. The second short story read by the same author is called The Baby Is Mine. And I gave this one two out of five stars. I think at this point I was kind of getting tired of the author's writing and the setting, which is also in the same setting as the other two books. And it was written during the COVID lockdown. I think that it was a little too soon for me to be reading this. And I think I just kind of got tired of the author's writing because I read all three of these books one after the other one. I should have given it a little bit of a break. This book is about this woman who gets kicked out of her house and she has to go live at her aunt's house during the lockdown. There's nowhere else for her to go, so she has to go there. And when she gets there, she's greeted by two women, her aunt and her aunt's husband's ex-mistress, I believe. So her aunt's husband is dead. His mistress is there and she's there and there's a newborn baby. And these two women are both fighting over whose baby is whose. Throughout the story, the main character is basically trying to figure out who's telling the truth, who's lying, and how she can help take care of the baby because they both don't seem to be ideal guardians for the baby. So she just has to deal with that. And she's also dealing with getting out of the relationship that she was in before she got kicked out of her house. As I said, I, I didn't really like it. I didn't like the lockdown setting. It was definitely way too soon. I just thought that the whole story was a little bit pointless, honestly. Like, why are the two women fighting over the baby? It just was a lot of back and forth fighting and it just, it was hard for me to get through this book, honestly. It was, it was pretty boring for me. Um, but I do like that it was a good, short, self-contained story. I don't think it needed to be any longer than this. And yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about this book. It was very average or a little bit below average for me. So if you saw my last video about me going to the little free libraries and picking up some books, this was actually one of them. So I read The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty. And I really thought that I would like this book because I've heard good things about this author. She wrote Big Little Lies and I watched a couple episodes of that TV show as well and I kind of liked it, but I did not like this book at all. I gave it one star or maybe 0.5 stars. Like this was the worst read of the month for me. I. I didn't like it. So this book revolves around three main characters, three points of view. The main point of view is about this woman named Cecilia who accidentally ends up finding a letter from her husband that says, Cecilia, only open in the event of my death. And apparently this letter contains a very big secret that are meant to have earth shattering repercussions for Cecilia and a bunch of other women in this man's life. The other point of views are Rachel, who is a school secretary. She's a little bit older. She has a grandchild. And then the other point of view is about this woman named Tess, who's a little bit younger. And she also has a son who goes to the same school as Cecilia's kids. So throughout the book, you kind of get to see how the characters' lives intersect and how they meet and how everything falls into place. So I have a lot to say about this book and pretty much everything I have to say is negative. So if you like this book, I'm sorry in advance. First of all, I don't think the setting was really meant for me. Cecilia and Tess are both in their mid thirties and Rachel is a grandmother. So I think she's like 60 or 70. The whole story is kind of about these wives taking their children to school and like, it's kind of more for the middle age demographic, I would say. I'm 21, almost 22, and this just did not appeal to me. The letter that Cecilia is supposed to be opening, she doesn't actually open it until halfway through the book. I am not joking. For the first half of the book, she's deciding between, should I open this letter? Should I not open this letter? What's gonna happen if I do? What's gonna happen if I don't? Hmm, I don't know. Should I open it? Should I not? And I hated that. I hated that. I wanted to know 
what was in that letter, I wanted her to open it. There was no reason why she couldn't open it. For the first half of the book as well, I was just wondering why there's three points of view and how these characters are interconnected. Because for the first half of the book, they didn't meet, their lives didn't connect, and it just, it didn't make sense. I was like, why am I reading about three separate characters who have nothing to do with each other? After the first half of the book, they all kind of connect and they meet and you see why, but it just, it took way too long. I feel like this book could have been half of what it was or even less and it could have done the job. This book was very predictable. I knew what the secret was gonna be. I knew what the letter was gonna be about from the first couple of chapters. And when she finally did open it, I thought, okay, that's the secret. I knew that already and the secret didn't even impact that many characters at all. Not much happened after we found out what the secret was. It didn't shock the community. There were no earth shattering repercussions. One more thing, all of the characters are not likable. Everything is predictable. I know the characters aren't supposed to be likable, but I just found myself not really caring about the characters at all. I did push through and persevere and read the whole book though, because I wanted to give you guys my opinion. I didn't look at any Goodreads reviews before and during when I was reading this book. And I'm glad that I didn't because I think if I did look at Goodreads, I would not have read this book at all because a lot of people had the same review that I did. They didn't like it, it was too predictable, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, this was my very disappointing read of the month that took up maybe a week of my life and I wish I had never read it. The final book that I read this month, I actually just finished reading this about an hour ago, is Beach Read by Emily Henry. So if you don't know already, this book was hyped up so much on booktube, so much on book talk, on TikTok and I just wanted to read this. It was on my TBR for this month and I finally got through it. I gave this one three out of five stars. It did not live up to the hype for me. So I wanted to read this book because two of my favorite booktubers, Haley Pham and Sarah Caroli, I will link their channels in the description. They are amazing. I honestly trust most of their recommendations. They said that this book was one of the ones that first got them back into reading. They also read Love In Other Words, which I absolutely loved. I gave it five out of five stars and they also gave it five stars. And I read that one last month in my last monthly wrap up, which I will also link in the description and I'll put it up in the cards for you if you wanna see what I read last month. So this book follows two characters. First, Augustus, who is a 30-something year old writer. He writes about literary fiction, a mystery thriller, um, and he's a little bit closed off. He has some kind of mystery to him. And it also follows this woman named January, also in her 30s, and she's also a writer. She writes romance books. So at the beginning of the story, January goes to her father's beach house, who her father has recently died, and she's still grieving. She goes to clean out the house, get rid of everything and sell it. She ends up meeting Gus, who is her next door neighbor. Her and Gus are both writing novels that are supposed to be due at the end of the year. They end up switching genres so that Gus writes a romance book and January writes a literary fiction mystery non-happy ending book and throughout this they take each other on little excursions or dates to learn more about each other's genre it follows them as they slowly get to know each other and fall in love so this book took me a really long time to read i'm not gonna lie i started reading it at the very beginning of the month and then i put it down for a long time and just yesterday i started reading it again i think i was at 60 percent of the way through and i just powered through it i was reading on the beach i was actually reading beach read on the beach yesterday as you can see here it definitely is a beachy vibe setting it's in a small town small town romance trope if you call it that the thing about this book is that it took me such a long time to read it was pretty slow in the first half of it i felt like there was nothing much going on except for the excursions that they went on and even so, the excursions or little dates, if you can call it that, they weren't even really that elaborate. Like I felt like they could do a little bit better. Um, I don't wanna get hated on because a lot of people love this book. A lot of people give it five stars, but it's, it's, just, it's just a three star read for me. Maybe I don't quite like romance books like this. I find that a lot of romance books have a very specific plot structure 
and this one followed it. Two characters meet, they both have attraction for each other, but they both keep denying it or they both keep pulling apart from each other. And then eventually they realize that they want to be together, so they are together. And then there's a really steamy romance scene. And then after that, they just break up or some kind of misunderstanding or miscommunication. And then afterwards they get back together. It's all kind of the same for me. And while I do like romance books, this one just followed that structure. I didn't really like it. Like there were lots of parts in this book where the characters just could have communicated a little bit better or just asked one simple question and all of the miscommunication would have been gone. All in all, it was a very predictable love story, but I did like the fact that they switched genres and then they were able to read each other's books after and they kind of had like a little contest there and they went on like these excursions and had fun together like they made it a really fun book and if you are looking for something to read on the beach i would recommend this although i think i would recommend love in other words a lot more than this even though that isn't set in a small town beach kind of setting so with that guys these are all of the books that I read in the month of May. Let me know what you thought and let me know if you have read any of these books or if any of these books are on your TBR. I would highly, highly recommend My Sister the Serial Killer and I would not recommend The Husband's Secret. Every time I look at this book, I just want to throw it at the wall. I don't like it. So this year, one of my goals was to get back into reading more. And at the beginning of the year, I set myself a challenge to read 50 books. And so far, I am at 19 books of the year. If you want to follow along and see how my reading challenge is going and see what books I'm currently reading, you can follow me on Goodreads or become my friend. I would love to have more friends on Goodreads. So I will link that in the description down below as always and also my TikTok and Instagram and all of that good stuff is always in the description for you. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos like this, and click that bell icon to get notified every time I post a video. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.